Hey friend, I got a great scripture for you today. I've been buzzing on this one for a few hours. I drove to Calgary and back today because I had a, a sales meeting there. And uh, I got meditating on Romans 4 verse 20. Today is April 20, 420. And so I was meditating on some 420s just for fun. I was into 1 Corinthians 420, which says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. I got into Acts 4.20, which says uh, we can't stop talking about the things we've seen and heard. But what I really got locked into was Romans 4.20. And I saw something in that scripture that I have never seen before. And it just exploded in my heart. And so I want to share it with you while it's still uh, hot off the press. And so Romans 4.20, this is what it says. It says, with respect, to speaking of Abraham, with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver. Say waver, okay? With respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith and gave glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, God is glorified when you walk in faith. God is glorified when you hear God's promise over your life and you do not waver. Well, I was meditating on that and I thought, I wonder what that word waver means. I've never really looked this one up before and so I looked it up. That word waver, I thought it was going to mean like wishy-washy or you know something like the waves of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. I thought it was going to be that kind of a word. It wasn't anything like that at all. This is a very interesting word. The Greek word that is translated as waver is the word uh, diakrino, diakrino. And what it means, the actual uh, literal definition is to judge or to distinguish, okay? To judge or distinguish. It means to separate or to discern one thing for another from another. Basically, it would be like a judge. Maybe you and I are fighting where we're, 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 um, we go to stand before a judge because we have a disagreement. Uh, they're going to hear my side of the story. But the judge isn't going to just take me at my word. No, then he's going to listen to your story. And when he's done hearing your story, uh, then, you know, there's lawyers there. They're going to have questions. They're going to ask me a bunch of questions. Steve, where were you on the night of July the 1st at 6.15 uh, p.m.? And I have to answer the questions. And then you're going to get asked a bunch of questions. And then you and I are going to sit down. And then the other witnesses are going to come. And there's all sorts of opinions. And I was here and I saw it from this angle. And there's all these different uh, uh, back and forth. And the judge listens to everything. Okay? He listens to both sides of the story. He listens to all the witnesses before he makes his judgment. Okay? That is uh, diacrino. What this is saying, okay, this is Steve's nearly inspired version, the SNIV version. Okay, I'll give you a good deal on the SNIV version. The SNIV version, what this verse is saying, when you keep in mind what diacrino means, is that with respect, okay, we're talking about Abraham, with respect to the promise of God, Abraham listened to God's opinion and he didn't give a flying turd what anybody had to say, <laughs> what anybody else had to say. You get, you get that? He heard God's opinion and then he ignored everyone else in the courtroom. And that is called faith. See, most people, they, what is God saying? Okay, and then what does common sense say? And then what does my wife say? And then what does my pastor say? And then what are my brothers and sisters saying? And what are my kids saying? And we hear all of these voices and we listen to all of these opinions. And when we've heard everyone out, then we would make our decision on what we believe. And God is one of many voices. That's not how it was with Abraham. Abraham took God at his word. He didn't give a flying turd. I'm going to call this video, Don't Give a Flying Turd. <laughs> okay? He didn't give a flying turd what anybody else had to say. Because if God said it, I believe it. And that settles it. Hallelujah. You know, uh, K Kenneth Copeland tells a story about uh, when he was younger, he walked with Oral Roberts. And Oral Roberts said to him one time, he wrote this down. He never forgot it. I, I wrote it down. He said this. He says, find out exactly what God has called you to do. Find out the perfect will of God for your life. 
and then confer no longer with flesh and blood, and then get your job done, whatever the cost. Hallelujah, I love that. Find out what God has called you to do. And once you know what God's called you to do, you don't need everybody else's opinion. What you need to do is get your job done. Now you say, Steve, are you trying to say I need to have an independent spirit? I don't need that. No, 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 no. I have people who speak into my life, okay? Uh, Don't hear what I'm not saying. I go to people for wisdom. I go to people for advice. But when I know, when I know that I know that I know that I've heard God's word on something, uh, friend, I get tunnel vision. I, I just, once I know God said this, you say whatever you want, but we're going to do this. I remember our gathering last year, you know, where uh, we, thousands came and uh, I had friends, people who loved me well said, Steve, you can't have meetings this big and not charge admission. You have to charge admission. You will lose your shorts for sure if you don't charge admission. And that gathering cost us over $100,000. But the Lord had said to me, don't charge admission and don't worry about it because I'll pay the bill. Just trust me. Put out an offering. You know, take an offering. Put out a bucket. But trust me, you're not going to be, Steve, you're not going to be my sugar daddy for this revival. I'll pay the bill. But don't charge admission. So when people come to me and say, Steve, you can't do a meeting this big. You'll lose your shorts. I said, thank you for your advice. And, and I had a few people really, really. These are, you know, let me tell you something. The people who will try to talk you out of faith will all, it won't be your enemies. It'll be people who love you the most. It's always the ones who, who don't want you to they mean well. They, they don't want you to start something you can't finish. Okay, And so they'll come and they'll give you lots of reasons to compromise what God has told you to do. But if you know that God has spoke to you, if you know that God has spoke to you, you just got to ignore all those voices Press forward and do what God has told you to do. The Lord spoke to me a few years ago about building this barn, this timber frame barn. Well, I thought it'd be about a million bucks. Well, it turns out it's timber's more expensive than I realized. But I even had a prophetic word from this prophetic fellow who didn't know me from a hole in the wall. And he gave me Haggai 1.8. Go up to the mountain and get me timber. 1.8 is my birthday. You know, me and my numbers. January 8th. He said, go up to the mountain, get me timber, and build me a house. I knew I had, thus saith the Lord, build out a timber. Well, when I found out how much timber cost, and then I have all these other voices saying, you know, you could build timber-ish. You know, you could build a, a you can build it other ways, but have timber accents. There's other ways to do it. But I know that I know that I know. God said, build a timber frame barn. And so it doesn't really matter how many wonderful common sense uh, 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 people come around me, I know I have to do what he told me to do. And by the way, we've raised a quarter million dollars for that barn, which is, he said, that's only one eighth. You know what? I don't give a flying turn what anybody else has to say. We're going to build that barn. And, uh, and I trust God. We've already got a quarter million. You watch and see. One day you will come to the altar and you will encounter God in a big, beautiful timber frame barn. And you'll say, you know what? That was probably God's idea. Friend, you, you have promises over your life. God has promised things to you. If you're not sure yet, you need to find out. Find out what God has planned for you. Find out the word of the Lord. Think back to the scriptures he's drawn you into. Look back at the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life that really resonated when you heard them. Write them out. Look at them again and again. And then just make up your mind. This is going to happen. Start declaring it. Start speaking it. Be like Abraham. It doesn't matter if you're a hundred years old and it just seems to be no way. If God said it, God will do it if you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe, if you will not waver in unbelief regarding the promise of God. Oh, I hope that was a blessing to you. I'm giving you permission to ignore common sense when common sense doesn't line up 
with God's word for your life. What's that scripture? Uh, <clears throat> Paul said, uh, we are taking captive. No, 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 go back a sec. Uh, he says, we are destroying speculations. Speculations. And every, that Greek word for speculations is logosmos. It, it, it becomes where we get the word logic from. It's all up in the head. It's all common sense, okay? We are destroying speculations and logic. And every lofty thing that raises itself up above the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. We've got to destroy. We've got to cast down every uh, voice that disagrees with God's voice in your life. God's promise is the only thing that matters. And we destroy speculations and every lofty thing that tries to rise up against God's promise in our lives. And it says, and we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. This is a daily work. It's not a once and for all, but it's every day. Choosing to believe God's word, to keep on standing, and don't let yourself waver by all those other voices and opinions. The only way to live a kingdom life, a faith-filled life that leads to miracles and kingdom, is to believe God and go His way no matter what anybody has to say. Anyway, I hope that was a blessing to you. Uh, like, share, and please don't forget to, if you haven't already, join our Oil Patch Pulpit community. That just gives me your email address so I can let you know where we're meeting, when we're meeting, if we're having gatherings in your area or out at the altar. Uh, just uh, shoot me an email and say, Steve, I like your stuff. Uh, and I will make sure you're on the list. Feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. That's my uh, email. Just feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. And also... Uh, don't forget to register for our next big gathering, which is coming up July 20 to 22. Register quick, uh, re July 20 to 22, and you can register at thealtar.ca. A-L-T-A-R is how you spell altar. All righty. Well, God bless you, and uh, we'll see you soon.